We're going to start right here in the Pantheon Certification Registry, which is a site on Pantheon. Um, you can see here that each environment, these are the three permanent environments, dev, test, and live. Uh, each one of these environments also has their own dedicated uh, platform URL. So if I click visit live site, for example, you see it's going to bring me to the uh, Pantheon platform URL. Same thing with the test environment here. I'll click the uh, visit test site and you can see um, only this part of the URL is different. And actually what we're looking at right now is uh, actually the live site. So um, in the live environment, you can set up a custom domain, which I've done here. So if I do Pantheon certification.pantheon.io, you can see that it's the same one. I'm just logged in here. All right. Uh, the reason why these look different is because the database is different for each environment. So when you move from one environment to another, um, the code is on the same Git repository. Um, and uh, the dev environment has your master branch and the test and live are also going to have the master branch because these are immutable but the database and files are independent for each environment. So as we talked about before, you have to be careful because when you clone database and files from one environment to another, it actually is going to overwrite in that environment for just the database and files. This also means that you, have, uh, you can have potentially different looking sites, even if they're using the same code base. Um, from the test environment to the live environment, for example. And then the dev environment is the same thing. So clicking this visit development site is going to bring up the dedicated URL. As we talk about multi-devs, this is important because each multi-dev, uh, just like the permanent environments, also has its own dedicated URL for sharing the progress of your site. And this is really critical in shortening that feedback loop between the developers who are working in the code and the business stakeholders who need to see the progress that the developers are making. So uh, just an example here, you can see that this um, table doesn't really look uh, as polished as maybe the business owners would want. But when we look in the live site, you can see that the table has been um, tweaked and it looks a lot nicer. So this is the type of back and forth that web ops can facilitate and help shorten that feedback loop and make sure that the sites are progressing as marketing and the business owners want, uh, even as the development team is doing that work under the hood. And that brings us to multi-dev environments. So um, a couple of things to point out about multi-dev environments. First of all, multi-dev uh, is, um, being created off of Git branches. Um, so you can see these are actually the names of feature branches. The dev environment is where your main branch or your master branch lives. Um, so whenever you make changes to the multi-dev environment, you can actually merge them in. Um, you can see we're in SFTP mode here. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, toggle back to Git mode. And now we're back in Git mode. So now that we're in Git mode, um, we can actually, if we want to, we can merge changes from these feature branches into the main branch by clicking this button, Merge Code. So I'm just gonna actually do that right now. And you can see that we've now merged the code directly into the main branch, uh, master branch here in the dev environment. So we can now um, deploy up to test and live if we wanted to. So that's how you would get your code from the feature branch in the multi-dev to the uh, master branch. So let's talk a little bit about the three ways that we can create multi-dev environments. The first way that I'll show you is to create them directly in the dashboard. Uh, using this button here. So we go to this multi-dev tab and we can see that there's this button. I'm just going to click create multi-dev environment. And I'm going to um, use this to develop a new feature um, for the uh, certification 
registry, which is going to be a hero banner. So I'm going to call the new feature branch hero banner to reflect that change that I'm going to make. And it's going to ask me which environment I'd like to clone my database and files from. You can see that you have a selection between dev, test, and live. And I'm going to clone the database and files from the live environment because that is where the latest updates have been made to the site by the content creators. So I'll click Create Environment. And that's going to go to work cloning the database and files from the live environment and creating that new feature branch called hero-banner as part of that new multi-dev environment. And now we have a new feature branch based multi-dev environment called Hero Banner. And I'm just gonna click into that new environment right here by clicking on this link. And you can see that this environment looks very similar to the other ones in terms of the dashboard. And I can now click on this uh, dedicated URL to visit that uh, multi-dev environment. And you can see that it's exactly the same as the live site because it's pulled the files and the database and cloned those from the live environment to this new multi-dev environment. However, any changes that I make on the code base here are going to be in this hero banner feature branch right here. And I can access this feature branch hero banner site by going to my local terminal and I can just go to the Git repository, my local for this site. And right now we're on master branch. But if I do a Git pull and then I do a Git checkout hero banner, you can now see that I am on this hero banner branch and I can start doing development on my local site and then push changes directly to this multi-dev by committing code changes to this hero banner feature branch and pushing that up. And then from there, I would be able to merge my changes from my dev uh, into my dev environment into the master branch. So that's the first way that we can create multi-devs on Pantheon. The second way is to take an existing feature branch and create a multi-dev environment that way. And this would look like this. So if I click on this tab right here, you can see all of the feature branches that are currently existing without multi-dev environments associated to them. So I can click create environment from an existing feature branch here. But let's say that I have an existing feature branch that I've been doing work on. So I'll create a new feature branch on my local. And I'll call this navbar. All right, so I am now on a local branch called navbar that does not exist yet on Pantheon. So I'll make one quick change. And I'll just add a text file in here. And now I'm going to push this up to my Pantheon site. All right, so it's, it's telling me that the existing branch doesn't yet exist on my Pantheon site, even though it does on my local. So I'm going to follow these instructions here.
Great. So now it says branch navbar set to track remote branch navbar from origin. All right. And you can see that I didn't even need to refresh my browser. That new feature branch is now live on my Pantheon site. So I can now just take that existing feature branch and create an environment from there. And again, it's going to prompt me to clone my database and files from one of my existing environments. In this case, I'll just select the test environment. And uh, that way, it will look a little bit different. And so you can see kind of the differences uh, between the multi-dev that was cloned from the database and files of the live environment versus the multi-dev that was cloned from the test environment. So going back here to the multi-dev environments tab, you can see that it's now spinning up a new multi-dev environment. And now we have a new navbar environment that uh, is created from this existing feature branch. And if we go to the uh, Git branches here, you can see that that uh, feature branch is no longer available here because there's already a multi-dev environment that's taking that up. So I'll click that navbar. And now you can see all of the uh, changes, including the one that I just committed here. So that's the second way that we can create multi-dev environments with an existing feature branch. And the last way is using Pantheon's Terminus command line interface tool. And we can find all of the uh, commands that Terminus can do over here. And if I start typing multi-dev, you can see that it'll bring up all of the different Terminus commands that we can use for multi-devs, including creating multi-dev, deleting them, multi-dev list, merge from dev, merge to dev. So I'm going to open up my uh, command line here. And I'm going to start by uh, logging into Terminus. So I'll do Terminus auth login. And that's going to match the machine token that I have uh, uploaded to Pantheon and the uh, account that I'm logged into, which is my email account. So now that I'm logged into Terminus, I can uh, create multi-dev or uh, spin down multi-dev. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is going to delete that multi-dev environment that I just created. You can see the instructions on how to, on how to do that here. So I'll do Terminus multi-dev delete, dash, dash, delete, dash, branch, and then the uh, site and the environment. So I'm gonna do Terminus multi-dev delete. And the site's name is um, actually going to be Pantheon Certification Registry. And then dot environment. And the, the environment is going to be navbar. So you can see that there's a predictable naming convention here. Uh, with the site name being the human readable name with dashes in between the words and uh, all lowercase. And then the name of the environment is just going to be the name of that feature branch that I just created. So I'm going to delete that. And now it's told me that it's deleted the multi-dev environment. So let's go check and we can see that multi-dev environment is no longer there. But now the feature branch is still there. So if I wanted to create a multi-dev environment again from that feature branch, I can click create environment again. But now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a multi-dev environment. So I'm gonna just look up the syntax here on our terminus commands. You can see that we're just gonna do terminus create. Um, and we have a couple of options here. So if I do no database, no files, it's not gonna clone any files or database. Um, so uh, I can actually do that um, 
but uh, let's let's create that new environment. So I'm going to create it from my live environment. So I'm going to do terminus multi dev create and then my site. And the environment that I'm going to clone. So I'll just clone the live environment. And then the multi dev name is going to be called terminus MD. And we've created a new multi dev environment with terminus. So let's check on the Pantheon dashboard to see our progress. If I go to my multi dev environments, we can see that I'll refresh here. And we can see that the new environment now is ready to go. And if I click on the URL here, we can see that it has successfully cloned the live database and files. So in summary, you can see that there are three ways that we've created a multi-dev environment. The first is to create a new one with this button right here, which will dynamically create a feature branch that we will name. Second one is to take an existing feature branch and create an environment using this button. And the third one is to use Terminus to create multi-dev environments. And this last method is noteworthy because this means that you can actually run these Terminus commands as part of a multi-step script at the end of a process that might include a CICD workflow or something similar.